Ancient philosophy talked about an end of time and a, and a, a transformation of humanity. And while they could tell us about when this might occur, they really didn't underline why it would occur. Now we know why we are facing our imminent extinction on this planet and coming to those prophecies and, and making them real, and that is this. We base our world on knowledge. Knowledge is power. Lack of knowledge is lack of power. Well, the knowledge that we've been operating with for, for many centuries, in the last couple hundred years specifically, the new scientific knowledge, is not actually found to be valid today which means we've been operating from misperceptions, misbeliefs about the world comes from. Well, the idea is very simply this. If, if you don't understand, the, if you have a misperception of the world, it can kill you. And so the significance, I'll give a simple example, is that if we had an anorexic person standing right here, and you and I looked at this anorexic person, we say, well, this person's near death, skin and bones. And we should ask them, what do they see when they look in the mirror? They say, well, I look in the mirror, I see this overweight, bloated person. And so they have a misperception. And what does the misperception lead to? It causes their brain to send chemistry to their body to reduce more weight. And because of a misperception, they're going to kill themselves. There was nothing wrong with their biology. It was their perceptions that were wrong. Well, we have three misperceptions that are causing our extinction. One is the belief that the material realm is all there is and all that matters. So that matter is all that matters. Number two is the belief that genes control our lives, which make us victims because we didn't pick the genes that can't change them and they have power over us. And the third one is an extension of Darwinian belief that says that the world is based on a struggle for survival. We all know about the rat race. And why is it a rat race? Because our fundamental belief is that if you don't go out there and fight to stay alive, you'll be trampled and killed. And so we see a world based on this Darwinian world, a nightmare of a struggle for survival, which involves war and competition and gouging each other for each one climbing up on the back of another to stay alive. So what's wrong with these perceptions? Well, number one, the belief that matters is all that matters. That's a Newtonian belief. Quantum physics has come in and said, boy, did you make a mistake on that? It's not the physical matter that's most important. It's the invisible stuff you can't see because it's the invisible fields, the energy fields that shape matter in the same way that a magnet can cause the shaping of iron filings. So if you look at the structure of what's going on in here and blame it on the structure, no, you missed it, it's based on the invisible. But the biggest part of con contribution to that invisible from us is our mind. Our minds are shaping the world, so whatever we believe is like a magnetic field that shapes our biology and our life to conform to the belief. So it says, wow, if that's true, then all of a sudden we should put more emphasis on the mind than on the body part. And that if we change our beliefs, then we can save our world. Myth number two was that genes control us, the belief of a victim. Again, cancer's in my family, what can I do about it? Might as well enjoy my life now. And all of a sudden we become irresponsible. Why? Because I said, well, if I can't control it, why do I care? And then irresponsible uh, nature leads us to, to the extinction as well. The new science says, no, genes don't control your life, your mind controls your life. That your mind acting through a new thing called epigenetic control, a new mechanism by which the environment or the perception of the environment controls our genetics is what controls our heredity. And all of a sudden it says, well then it means if you change your mind or your perception, then you change your biology. And the answer is, absolutely, so you're a master of your life rather than a victim. And a third one, that says, get all the matter you can, take it from the earth, rape the planet, gather it all in your yard because that's a measure of your success. Turns out, no, it's not. And the competition you use to gather all this matter is actually now found to be destructive because evolution is based on a cooperation. When we look into the biosphere, it's all a balanced, harmonious community except for us because our belief says it's a struggle the plants and the animals behind me, they look at it as this is a garden for them. It's We're the only ones that are out of the garden by a misperception. Since perception controls life and misperceptions can kill you, then you recognize the fundamental misperceptions on which we base our civilization are the destructive elements leading to our extinction. And when the new beliefs come into the public, civilization will take a radical turn and move off into a new situation of thriving and harmony and holism. That's the dimension that we're going to. This is the end of the civilization of the old beliefs. 
end the transition into the new one. It's really interesting when we look at the world right now, it's in crisis and that really promotes a lot of fear, which then creates a worse situation because then we get into protection, shut ourselves down. So I think we should look at what's really going on in a different understanding. Cells are like people and you have 50 trillion cells in you, so you have 50 trillion citizens, people inside of you. But imagine you were inside a caterpillar and you were in there with millions and millions of other cells and all the cells have jobs, digestion, respiration, muscle cells doing their thing. Everybody's got a job, caterpillars growing. Everybody every day at the end of the day go, wow, man, we were working today. This thing is building, the caterpillar's getting bigger and bigger. The economy in that caterpillar is growing. So you as cells inside, you don't see the outside world, you see the inside world of, of your universe of cells as workers and all that. And you're looking around saying, yeah, system is growing, economy's great, everything's wonderful. Then there's a point where the caterpillar reaches a certain size and things start to slow down. And all of a sudden when things start to slow down, there's like more cells than necessary for the jobs. Cells start getting laid off, actually, I have what's happened. And many cells in this fear state actually commit suicide, which in biology is called apoptosis. They actually commit suicide because they look around going, oh, this thing's falling apart, everybody's losing their work, that seems like it's coming to an end. And while everybody's in that panic fear, there are other individual cells in there that are not panicked. These other cells genetically identical, but have a different vision. And they're called imaginal cells. That's the name of them. And these imaginal cells, they're in the midst of all this falling apart of their civilization, are looking and say, there's something better and more beautiful in front of us. They're the ones that create the butterfly. So from the same population that's going down with the caterpillar, many of these imaginal cells, which are the equivalent of cultural creatives, have a new vision for the civilization, saying, wait, wait, restructure this thing. We can restructure this, we can make something far better. What's happening in the world today is the end of the caterpillar. And the imaginal cells are making themselves known with new ideas, new visions, and new ways out. Because there is a far better way out. It's not the end at all. And most importantly, it's the young people have to recognize they're the population of imaginal cells because it's up to them to take what was brought into the civilization and restructure it so that they can build that butterfly civilization that is far more magnificent. So rather than looking at fear, Right now, look at this as the moment of opportunity because there's something so much better on the horizon, but we can only get there by eliminating the structure as it is now because the structure as it is now is providing for our extinction. Why is the myth perception of genes such a problem? And the answer is, if you buy that genes control you, then you buy yourself as a victim. And as soon as you buy yourself as a victim, you let go of your power in creating life. The new science of epigenetics totally reveals that this is not true and in fact uh, takes the mind and uses that as the shaper of the physical world. And the third mis myth perception that is affecting us right now is a Darwinian belief that evolution is based on a struggle for survival with the fittest being the winners so that what does all this lead to? It leads to a belief of materialization that matter is all there is and that people fight over the matter because whoever has the most matter wins according to the Darwinian theory of having the most and being the winner and being the fittest uh, and it makes a whole world based on competition and the, the new science completely undermines that whole thing because the new science says evolution is based on cooperation and if you don't cooperate then the whole thing is lost what we're seeing right now is with all the competition of each other destroying each other, wars competing for material existence, raping the planet and tearing it apart to get some pieces of it to hold in your hands and say you won the game. Every one of those moves is destructive, not just of the planet, but of human civilization, because human civilization will thrive with cooperation and will die with competition. And we're caught up in the, these three old beliefs, uh, these three old myths, as being truth. And if you operate from these truths, then you end up with the extinction that lies before us.